can whistle. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that usually works. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I've been talking about laptops and OS, uh, laptops using, uh, you know, if you're an OS2 user and you want to use a laptop yes. in 2017. Um, this is just about issues. I'm not going to probably say a lot of things that are new to anybody, but uh, I wanted to gather all the information into one place. You know, we hear a lot about device drivers, but how does it relate to if you want to actually use a laptop um, uh, on OS 2 or Ecom Station or Arca OS? Um, because the laptop hardware is sort of a moving target. A lot of us are using older ones because we have to. You know, where is the whole thing moving? And if you are picking one to run today, you know, you have particular needs that I don't even know. But this gives a survey to show you about where in the laptop spectrum you ought to start looking. Um, I'm not going to talk about running OS2 in a virtual machine. I, for a lot of people, that's a good solution, but uh, I, I'm just not that familiar with it. Um, you know, I, I've run OS2 as my operating system, so I don't know the other operating systems well enough to really be a good guy to run an OS2 in a virtual machine. Although, I guess, if you were running in a virtual machine, you might want to be an old, running an old copy of OS2. You know, what, what's the difference? Then, you know, the virtual machine doesn't care. You can give it the right environment for any operating system. I'm not going to talk about running OS2 in a desktop or an all-in-one computer, although there is convergence. You know, the more des recent desktops I get have most of the components of a, a, a laptop at this point, you know, including the Wi-Fi. Most desktops have Wi-Fi at this point. So, uh, this converging thing, maybe this would be different in a year or two. Um, I have used a bunch of laptops on OS2, and so this gives me sort of the range of, you know, from oldest to newest of what I know about. And it's been pretty exclusively the IBM and the Lenovo brand. Uh, I've used a couple of others, but I, I didn't use them very long. So I, I'm just sticking with this. It's not that IBM or Lenovo are better, it's just what I knew. And probably a lot of the other brands have a very analogous sort of trade-off between older ones and newer ones. So uh, I started out with a T23. I'd never had a laptop before. They were hideously expensive. Uh, it just looks strange with the aspect ratio of the screen. Um, now I, I'm used to widescreens now, but uh, what made it uh, interesting by today's standards, it was pretty small. Uh, 384 megabytes of RAM and a 60 gig hard drive. Uh, but that was what we needed at the time, and uh, I you know, had my first OS2 consulting job with a lot of travel uh, with this machine. Uh, did a lot of great things on, on site with, with it. Um, used it to the point where the screen was just sort of smashed. So I uh, got a new laptop and repurposed it as my server. Ran it 24 seven for six years uh, with the new enhanced hard drive, and, and you know, it just was very nice as a server, very low power. Um, oh, I, I went back up. Only had USB 1.1, which uh, I, I thought was great at the time, but now I'm you know, sort of seeing a lot of limitations with what I can do with USB 1.1, uh, since a lot of my clients are still on that level of machine. Uh, you know, as I try to fit modern components in and say, I'll just copy this gigabyte file, Oh, <laughs> okay. I replaced it with a T30, which was uh, you know a much finer machine than the uh, uh, T uh, T23. Um, although still, you know, not that much RAM, not that much hard drive. Uh, I had bought I, this is when I first met uh, Lewis, so I bought a uh, Cisco 350 PC card, Wi-Fi from him, and uh, he has. He was, That's right very essential in getting a lot of the OS2 community up on Wi-Fi at, you know, at the beginning. And, uh, and I, I found that to be pretty, pretty darn useful as I was uh, you know, traveling and needed, needed internet support. You know, I was one of the early guys who just, oh, I need this, I gotta get it working. And uh, my, my scripts to just you know, connect and disconnect went worldwide. I just, you know, they're not good <laughs> scripts, but a lot of people use them. I've seen them on websites all I over. I have it here. <laughs> I have it here. <laughs> and it had USB 2.0. <laughs> so, you know, all of a sudden, you know, copying things and backing up got, got real easy. Um, so, 
uh, I don't know why. I guess we didn't have really memory hungry browsers and uh, web uh, and office suites at that time. 512 megabytes of RAM with this machine seemed gloriously more than I needed. I, I don't know. That, that's an interesting thing. Um, at this point, T23s and T30s are probably hard to get. I mean, they, they've actually just, you know, there aren't enough of them left. And, um, you know, if, if you're using them, God bless you. But, uh, <laughs> I have a couple dead ones. Right, right. Yeah, but you probably could assemble a live one from I might be able to make one work. Yeah. <laughs> T43, uh, nice. you know, this, is, this is a backbone. A lot of people still using this one. Uh, I certainly used uh, this and a couple others for some time. Bigger screens, uh, more resolution, uh, two gigabytes of RAM. I mean, it's more, wow. And uh, fast Ethernet, which. Um, you know, that, that was a nice thing. I'm, I'm now big, backing up bigger and bigger files, and that's uh, well worth it. Mini PCI for Wi-Fi is on board. You know, that, that was just not, I'm not carrying that card, which is uh, you know, easy to break. Um, and Snap Graphics with uh, terrific acceleration, which somehow along the line an ECS broke. I don't remember what it was that that said Snap wouldn't run anymore on a T43, but it was kind of kind of sad. Um, but you know, by that time I was ready to move on, so I, I didn't didn't really care. But T43s were so widely spread. I think they there's still a reasonable chance you'd get one and, and have it expect to work or get parts for it. Uh, it's probably the oldest thing that I would say. Yeah, this is a reasonable thing to run. Also, that it runs OS2 Warp 4 or at least MCP out of the box. That works for a lot of people who don't want Ecom Station or Arca OS. Um, X41 I got as an experiment. I was really getting tired of lugging a heavy laptop, and this one did pretty much everything that the, T4, uh, the T43 did, but in a much smaller size. Uh, I think uh, three pounds, two, no, 2.7 pounds with a small battery. And uh, that that's nice and light. Uh, in the terribly small airline seats that we have, this one fits with a little room left over, and uh, that was that was you know feeling pretty good. You know, crowded room, crowded you know cafe. You know, like, oh, oh, not a problem. So um, this was good. The problem hard drive, a 1.8 inch IDE hard drive, uh, which was the same as an iPod. So uh, I got SSDs that were for iPods and slung them in there, and it, it works. Um, you know, DVD is only available in the dock, uh, and well, USB 2.0. I didn't write it down, but it has USB 2.0. Uh, so I have people who are still in love with the X41, and you know that, that this is their OS2 machine of choice. Um, uh, with the SSD, it's you know fairly speedy, but uh, T60. I you know first moved on. This was you know kind of unfortunate uh, thing, but with a real. SATA interface instead of what the T43 had. T43s have hard drives that are, it, it has to be the right one for the T43. It, it, it will fail with an, a code if it well, doesn't. Well, the, uh, yeah, that's right. You need to use the, um, fortunately. No, the, no, the, the Wi Fi card. Wi Fi card you will need fail the, the code. You need the, um, the BIOS patch for the Wi Fi card. You could get a BIOS but patch. But the latest BIOS for the T43, you can put in pretty much any disk you want. It oh, just okay. gives you the error message that says that you're using an unsupported oh, disk. Oh, okay. And the latest, the final version of the BIOS, that error message will time out and oh, automatically right. proceed. Prior to that, it would require a manual OK continue. Or well, certain part numbers will not give that error message at all in T43. Yes, correct. And over time, if you're willing to order from, China, you know, order from eBay from China, that they are way more common than they've ever been. I mean, yeah. today there are a lot of T43 hard drives, <laughs> and you know they're they're obviously kind of, but you know they manufactured them in the first place. And they want it, they want the commerce. So it, mm -hmm. you know, actually, a T forty three hard drive is easier, easier to support today than it was back in the day. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Uh, T sixty is the first 
series, the 60 and the 61, these were terrible overheaters. And you know, uh, the next few are just going to be like that. The first core two duo, uh, it had a lot of problems with uh, graphic support. You know, this was all setting MTTRs. You know, and, and that was our drivers back then. Since then, this has all been corrected. I'm sure that if I were supporting a T60 or 61 today, it wouldn't really be a big issue. But back in the day, this was a problem. I would generally, to install Ecom Station on a T60 or T61 or any of those, uh, put the machine in the refrigerator before I started, and then take it out, let it just warm up enough, and then install, and it would finish the install mm -hmm. before it popped. And uh, that, that was just a, a wonderful part of this series. X60 was the miniature version of the T60 and uh, has no, no rotating storage. For carrying a machine around, that was, that was pretty good. I think, uh, I think I still have one of those in the garage somewhere. So, um, I have one right here. What? I have one right here, but this is the tablet version. Oh, okay, yeah. Now, uh, I, I think it's actually a kind of perfect ARCA OS machine. Uh, you know, support for everything. You know, sorry it's a little after its day, but... Yeah. <laughs> but you're still selling it. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I intend to, when I get a, a, enough time, to go back and put ARCA OS on that and see if I'm right about it being sort of kind of the ultimate ARCA OS machine where everything works. Uh, newer machines, well, there's you know things we don't have support for, but I think everything on that is going to work. Um, DVD on the dock uh, or USB. Um, yeah, this is this, this actually might be a reasonable machine. I don't know if they're still available on eBay. I, I X60s. X, yeah, you know, the X60, the T60. Those I'm I'm not sure about those. Uh, I went ahead to the next generation, and you know, overheating problems were gone. This this is a nice machine. I, you know, I I got a sort of high end one, and it's really fast. Um, yeah, nineteen twenty by twelve hundred screen, which is probably why uh, uh, there were so many people who said I need bigger than HD resolution on the uh, OS2 World Survey. At least that's what I was thinking when I answered that question. It was bigger than. 1925. <laughs> um, yeah, this, I, I like this machine. Uh, Wi-Fi, kind of unsupported on this one. I retrofitted a Intel 5100 Wi-Fi chip into it, um, a Wi-Fi mini PCI card into it, and then used the unsupported GenMac following procedures I'd run on read online. I think especially that Andy wrote who ironically couldn't get it to work, but I did several times. <laughs> I, got, well, I, got, I got it to work. Yeah, uh, so I don't know. But uh, you know, fairly successful, and I found it to be flaky in that it didn't always work the first time. So I'd be turning it off, turning it on. Oh, OK, it worked this time. So, but there's a switch on it to turn it on and off. So, Well, the first time I loaded it, I got the thing working, and it was, you know, yeah. it, every so often I had to shut it off. Yeah. And then I reloaded the whole system, and then every time I rebooted, I had to shut it off, yeah. turn it back on, right. turn it off and back on. Yeah. And on mine, every now and then, if I'm using a connection that requires encryption with a WPA supplicant, yeah. every now and then WPA supplicant just loses the plot and the connection goes away. And sometimes it'll happen within five or ten minutes. Yes. If I'm on an open connection, I never seem to have a problem. Oh, okay. Okay. I almost always use it. Well, I use them both ways. And Sometimes it works. Yeah. It seems to depend on the access point that I'm connecting to. Or right, right. With a strong signal, it rarely happens. But well, actually, I'm usually in my apartment two feet oh, okay. from my access so point. So it does happen for you yeah. in that case. Okay. Uh, and also this traps from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have a good recipe for, you know, oh, it traps when you do this. I just like to Mine traps if I boot up in certain areas where there are certain types of Wi-Fi signals. Aha. Uh -huh. I think it's something to do with multiple access points. Yeah. Okay. For a Multiple and access if, points. If I turn yeah. off the radio before I boot up, it doesn't tend to do it. Oh, okay. I, I always operate that way, so I don't see that as much, but I do see it. And this multiple access points was a big bug before. Stephen Levine went to work on that. I don't know who else worked on it, but uh, it, 
after he finished, it was much, much less of a problem. And I do know, both, both of these have the same problem, actually. Uh, on campus, when I was doing my uh, master's, uh, I could not boot them up on campus, because they would guarantee trap, unless I turned the Wi-Fi off. Oh, well, before it was absolutely sure to happen. I mean, if I went to the library, you know, it was yeah. going to pop. But if I did it at home, it would be OK. And you know, it was because of the number of, of uh, available access points. Yeah. I don't, I don't. We had a library that Oh, yeah, had, that, that thing, yeah. Yeah, 100 yeah, different people. It's a different there. problem. The number of access points was a thing Stephen worked on. Yeah. yeah. This is a different issue. This is something with weird that's weird with the yeah. multiple access, access points that makes these crash. Uh -huh. I think I think it has to do with having multiple access points for the same uh, same SSD. 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 Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I see. yeah. Okay. So. So big like campus networks and so on would tend to trigger, it. but small shop access points right. maybe not. That's that's what I've heard. I can't prove that that's true, but okay. I haven't done detailed yeah, testing. I've seen the same. I thing. have I have an environment available which I don't usually use that has that. I can go up to campus and definitely see this. Uh, in spades, so <laughs> just have to stand at the right place. I'm sure I could see as many access points as I need to. All right, uh, good. Right, thanks for that information. Um, X200 is just a small version of the W500, um, and I, I, I really like this machine. It was, you know, I, I was using a terabyte hard drive, a hybrid hard drive with this, and it'd be fast. Hybrid hard drives have worked well for me. Uh, OS2 has a very small boot footprint, so as they learn the boot sequence, the SSD always contains all the files OS2 needs to boot. And because I occasionally use PM mail, it also contains all my index files for my mail. So PM mail starts like that, and OS2 boots really rapidly. It's a it's a pretty happy combination of uh, you know fairly fast machine and you know Wi-Fi still supported <coughs> using Gen Mac. So this is a good generation. Uh, the next generation, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Neil, <laughs> how is the procedure to install it on a hybrid hard drive? Is the same? It's just it just looks like a hard drive. Just the like it, and it, the hybrid oh, it by handles itself. itself. It's it, one it. logical unit number. It looks like the high, the hard drive portion of it, and the SSD portion is only used as a cache, and it okay. manages it itself. It manages itself. Uh, what okay. do you call an LRU algorithm? Um, so. It just you know learns by what you use. That's what's going to be in the cache. You know, you know, if you reboot a lot, guaranteed the operating system will be in that LRU, or it will be in the cache. I, 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 I sort of tosses things that are not used. So. Um, so you don't have to do anything. Yeah, you don't. You don't have to do. All you have to do is use the laptop. Okay. Yeah, you know, and it will it will learn your pattern. So that, that that's pretty handy. Um, this is this laptop. I, I've been pretty pleased with this after David did a lot of work on it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so uh, various models of this have between four, actually 4 and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, I, I'm using a 2 terabyte SSHD at this point. There's no point in going higher than 2 terabytes until more work is done on our drivers. And uh, Wi-Fi kind of just got tired of waiting and got an external uh, uh, bridge. Yeah, which kind of which, which brand of external bridge are you using? I'm using TP Link, um, and you know it's cheap and small, and so um, I can give you exact numbers. Actually, I have that on my website. Um, I tried a few of them, and um, you know they all seem to work. Um, they all they all seem to work remarkably the same way, even down to the same passwords. Uh, I, I have one so I suspect it's the same chip on <coughs> Whatever the features are of it, you know, I think it's just the same chipset I think. Yeah, and yeah, this is a generation where you get to turn USB 3 off in BIOS to, to allow it to boot. Um, other, without doing that, it, it said, you know, a, a scan says it only has uh, USB 3, it doesn't have any USB 2 capabilities. Um, scanning the next generation shows only USB 3 capabilities, and no way to turn off the USB 3. So uh, this is sort of the last generation where you won't have to you know, move over for a hard drive, and then figure out some way to control it without using um, USB. So um, it's, we're kind of up against it on this. I, I know on the desktop, this would be like a, a what do you call it, an M700 uh, kind of uh, desktop. 
and I, I just couldn't make any hand <coughs> with that at all. It, it, it starts to boot and it stops, you know, so there's no installing. And does this one have a DVD drive in it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just bought this one brand new in the shop, mm -hmm. and the label said in the shop that it had USB 2.0, so I, and I asked the store manager if I could crawl into the BIOS and see if it had a legacy BIOS. He instantly looked at me with a blurred face going like, <laughs> sure, go ahead. I don't know what you're talking about, but if uh -huh. you just leave it intact, I could check it. But for sure, it only has USB 3.0 and it doesn't have an optical drive in it. Uh -huh. So there's no way of, of booting ArcOS on this currently. So mm -hmm. The only thing I can think of is uh, get a uh, an image that Greg's going to create later and then pump that image via DFC under Windows or DOS back onto the hard drive and then see if it boots. But yeah. other than that, yeah. Right. So or, you know, I guess so swap in a hard drive, you know. You can't because really? it doesn't have a drive bay yes. on the bottom. It's completely closed up. So I haven't opened it yet. There's no, yeah, yeah, yeah. there is no. Yeah, it looks like it has screws on it. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm not going to open it under warranty. It's oh, okay. It, it, it was 700 euros. So. Right, right. Well, you know, it's kind of a religious issue too, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but it, uh, yeah, this is, this is the latest I'd be comfortable <laughs> Telling people that yeah, this could run from this generation. So yeah, as as that's our state of drivers. You know, when we have um, USB 3.0, a lot of these things will open up for installation and use. Uh, the Wi-Fi will make a difference. Um, these are the two drivers that probably make the <coughs> most difference. Um, so you know, I, I looked at some of the lap features that make a laptop different from some desktops anyway, and. Uh, so Wi-Fi is something that, you know, this is why we have a portable computer. And, you know, even <laughs> desktops to some extent, we don't want to wire all over our houses. And so, you know, that's why we want uh, Wi-Fi all the time. Um, but we don't have the drivers. So, you know, I've been using, using the travel router. And it actually works better than the Gen Mac and uh, uh, X, X, what is it called, XW? XW LAN. XW LAN. XW LAN has certain certain limitations. Uh, sure. you know, certain buffer override uh, buffer overruns happen. If I tether from an iPhone, it crashes every time. So so I don't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is what I'm using the TP Link. Um, small, cheap, um, and you know it's it's been sensitive. I, you know I, I'm surprised here. Well. It's not picking up hotel Wi-Fi in this room, but uh, really, it's not. No, uh, it's picking up a Martin. Yeah, for the both of ours. Okay, well, I was over on that side of the room. And didn't we have we have uh, two different ones over here. Okay. This is, this is an I/O gear, and this is an I/O gear as well. Yeah. That's the one. Uh -huh. I think that's the one I'm using at home. I right. Yeah. And this one or, or an Angus? And look more like this one's got a little uh, WPS button on the top of it, and uh, yeah, yeah. That's the one. Yeah, because I did link to my router that way at home. Okay, yes. so you can see how many of us are oh, using these. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. so yeah. let's just, you know. Then I'm using it because I, I have a mini little, little I'm, I'm never well, desktop, you want to call it, except that it has no slots. By mm -hmm. It syncs to the um, but it does have encryption, yeah. Yeah. so it sets it to yeah. what your router has. Okay. Yeah. So One difficulty is to connect to this, you have to connect to the router. Configure your connection and then reboot. Yeah. Well, what do you have to reboot? Well, it, all right, I would really just have to down the connection and re-up it. Yeah, well, I know someone who wrote a script to do that. I bet you could write a script to do that. I'm thinking. <laughs> Uh, suspend resume used to be a, a really big deal. I, I, I love the feature, it's, you know, and as I was thinking, I can't get it to work on this laptop, you know. Um, and I said, wait, let me time how long it takes to get up to the desktop. Oh, I bet suspend resume isn't that important anymore. Thirty-one seconds. Yeah, I, you know, think of all the delays. So thank you for speeding up the boot process in our <laughs> <laughs> That's 
uh, so it's, it's just not as important. There's, there is that beautiful ACPI stat function that can tell you what, what well, shed some light anyway on what's stopping you from uh, having suspend resume work, but you know, I, I think it's getting to be too little return for the effort. Well, it, it's never going to work 100% of the time for every every system because yeah. if you have drivers that are not suspend resume <coughs> capable, yeah, those drivers are likely so old they're never going to get fixed. Yeah, we um, don't have the source for every driver. No, no demand. No, but even even the simple ones that you know are on, on most mainstream laptops, mm -hmm. it, it, that, what I'm saying is the re the return on the effort may not be worth it. There's there's Better, better versus <coughs> yes, yes. Better, you know, so, and hibernation, I, I, I kind of like the idea, and we used to have the feature way, way back, mm -hmm. but you know, I haven't seen it work in OS two for well, forget years. For, forget about it. I haven't yeah, seen it work on anything properly in twenty years. So, well, I have, <laughs> apparently, hibernation is on by default in Windows ten on a, on a tablet or a laptop. Yeah, probably when the, the battery is getting feature. low. Yeah. It, it, there's a. Um, for instance, the ThinkPads have Ready Safe, uh -huh. and what they do is, when the battery's getting low, they automatically hibernate all the data so they can just shut down and save whatever's yeah. in memory at the time. It's handy for that. I used to have people who like to hibernate their machines overnight so instead of suspending them, so then they could come back and start them up again. But again, yeah. like everything else, like who cares? Right. I mean, what difference does it make? Well, yeah. Apparently, this is a the service issue for Windows 10 is they find that they're not actually stable enough to never reboot. Which, you know, if you're always hibernating, you never reboot. I have, I have a client who specifically hibernates her machine instead of rebooting because of the slow Windows startup. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But the problem is that she'll call me and she'll say, you know, I'm having a problem with my machine. And I'll say, well, when did you reboot it last? Well, I just started up. No, no, no. When did you reboot it yeah. last? Not when did you read the last jump that you saved to your hibernation file? Right. And because it makes a big difference. Yeah. My friend had it you know, three or four months. Well, yeah. The answer would be when it was in the factory. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think even hibernate under OS2 requires it to be. I could be wrong, but I think you actually also need to install it on FAT. In order for it to work, because I think it has an altered version. It used to be the hibernation think, disk. Yeah. The hibernation feature disk required a fat partition. Yeah. And I think that there's a special version of the OS2 loader for mm -hmm. for the oh, okay. uh, for it even to work. Well, four gigabytes of RAM says I'm not doing that any anyway. Right. Well, that's that's the other problem. It's not <laughs> going to fit on the fat 16 partitions. Yeah. So remember the the last somebody got the last partition which supported OS2 from the fact the hibernation partition on here is a was a T43 right. with two gigabytes maximum RAM. I didn't yeah. So a two this gigabyte fat partition eight. wasn't a problem. But I never even saw a 243 hibernate. So oh, I had this one hibernate. You had that one hibernate. Okay. Yeah, I used to. I just don't yeah, reserve two. Because the room for that has got to be in the space at the front of the drive. Sure. You can't put that hibernation mm -hmm. partition at the back end. Yeah. And I have something else in the front of my drive okay. that I couldn't use it for that. So that was the first casualty. All right. Fair enough. I haven't missed it, though. Particularly <laughs> <laughs> the SSD. Exactly. The they boot up, then, mm -hmm. you know, All right. less important. Screen sizes, and this is, I put this up partly because I didn't know exactly where I'm going with this, but um, I'm looking at screen sizes of, of recent laptops, and uh, twice twice HD seems to be uh, a thing that's settling in. So the 3840 by 2160 is going to be a common resolution. Uh, you know, right now it's only on the expensive laptops, but is that going to work at BIOS and uh, Visa? Is that? Sure. It could. Well, okay. enough memory, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I guess it's not that much memory, really. Well, it's not a maximum to the amount of video memory that I was to can address. I think that there's a maximum of 64 megabytes that the... Uh, well, that's right. okay. Yeah. So, 64 megabytes. I don't know what resolution that's going to be, but it's a lot that's more than that. Eight. That's 8 for 8 bits. 16, 32... 3, three megabytes. 32 bit. Uh, that's 32, uh, 32 <coughs> uh, per pixel, you know. 
Yeah. No, that's, that's, so, oh, okay. Yeah. Is that right? Well, when you wait a second here, because these are okay. This is three. This, this is megapixel. Bits. Yeah. This is bits. Okay. Yeah. So you got like about two times four is eight megabits. Really? Does that span mega megapixels? <coughs> yeah. yeah. So here you go. Uh, that's 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 one, and one times the number of bits per pixel. 32. Well, that's getting pretty close to that 64. Okay. So this, this is the last generation will fit in 64 meg <laughs> at full color. Yeah. At one image. I without, think it's somewhere a, documented without a in, the, uh, in the snap documentation wow. how much memory yeah. the wow. red sub video so, sub Yeah, 64 megabyte might be a, a limitation if you wanted two copies of the picture. No, there's a 32 meg. Wow. Okay. Interesting. So we are we are kind of up a, up against it you know, as far as I could, I could be wrong. This is from okay. memory from yeah. There should be enough room for two images. Barely. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Very interesting. Um, yeah. Laptops are battery powered. I, I found an enormous increase in battery life. With you, what? But you are reaching the point beyond that where unless you have a loop with you. You're not going to be able to see the damn pixels. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and the, the reviews all say, "Well, it looks better." Yeah, yeah. right. And you can't see it. You can't see it, but you know, <laughs> um, you know, I could sort of see their point. And you know, the eye is kind of weird on how it works. So, um, battery life got a lot better a few generations of ACPI uh, ago, and uh, it's still good. Um, tools for monitoring battery battery status are better than they used to be. So, you know, um, I don't know what else to say about battery. Uh, yeah, we were just talking about US display support. USB 2.0 not available. Uh, you know, addressed by USB 3.0 driver, whatever that is ready. Wireless network support is something we need eventually. Um, you know, I, obviously we're all using these externals, so I, that could probably go on a while. BIOS replaced by UAFI. Uh, we discussed this last year, and um, you know, you, right now there's a, a legacy mode that works well, and I don't know how long that will continue. Um, probably for a while. Probably it's probably going to be around for some time to come because uh, Windows 7 does not support UEFI boot, and Microsoft has it on the support list until January 2020. I actually so. Some of the some of the latest uh, uh, stuff coming out, though, they said that they're just not going to support newer hardware. They're just not going to support newer hardware. So even though they're still get on the support, uh -huh. they're not going to support newer hardware. Right. So. But if you're an um, equipment manufacturer, you might still want to sell to. It did, yeah. Some of the, the, they were talking about that Intel has decided to go in with uh, Microsoft. Yeah. So. Okay. Well. Um, so whether that's going to go go true with the UEFI and for certain or not, but some of their stuff, some of the uh, I was reading the article the day they're talking about the, the questions on how well anything newer, older than Windows 10 would work on the, some of the later, the latest uh, CPUs. Uh huh. So. Yeah. Okay. So they're seeing as less a requirement, so perhaps that BIOS. So after a while, you and we were talking about running <coughs> our own compatibility program, and that, that seems like a, a good way forward on that. DVD no longer available. I mean, just going to the, the big box electronics store and seeing how <coughs> the DVD media section is shrinking. Uh, you know, everything is shrinking. Um, I, I don't, I don't see this as a good uh, media for much longer. You know. It's, it's, the last floppy has been manufactured already, and, and I don't know how long it'll be before the last DVD is manufactured, but um, it's, uh, I, I'm glad to see us moving in the direction of having other, other possibilities for install, installation. And the final thing is uh, hard drive. You, know, it, it's, you don't see hard drives in phones and tablets. I suspect we're not gonna see them in PCs after not that much longer. You mean non-SSD, right? Not, not, an SS, not just SSD, but just, you know, 
have non-volatile RAM replace that. Uh -huh. And as an architecture, it saves them a bunch of money. Well, as, but as a matter of fact, mobile phones and tablets also have some sort of an SSD built in. I mean, if you look at the latest mobile phone that I purchased, has 32 gigs of storage in it. Right. So it's not called an SSD, but it has actual storage it's, capacity on it. it so. no, right, we will have that capacity. And it's increasing dramatically it's increasing. quick. But there's no, you know, as, as Sandy pointed out, if Intel and Microsoft are working together, there's no reason for the PC to contain that hard drive interface anymore. It's all in RAM anyway. Why not just have RAM? The NVMe things. Yeah, mm -hmm. non volatile Yeah. And, and so uh, the interface may, may well change. So the hard drive interface is what I probably should say. May not be, you know, it, it's a legacy thing uh, and I'm sure we can work around it. You know, I, I look at, um, you know, the R. Uh, Pro probably the hard disk interface in some sort or shape will still be there as the OS still needs something after the, the UEFI or BIOS, whatever is there. Mm -hmm. to talk to the controller and to control that's how how android also boots up from the uh, from the mobile phone so there must be some sort of an interface for a disk controller yeah i think i think there's difference and that's what we'll you know that's what we need to be aiming at and okay. i think that that's probably not that hard to do so you know, i don't see this as being you know a big issue but you know the future of laptops is it's not going to look just like uh, an original ibm pc or even like this machine you know, there, there will be architectural changes going on, and that, that's one of the ones I see is, you know, as we go on to a, a RAM-rich environment, you know, we'll say, well, why don't we simplify it? You know, I'm sure they will. Neil, well, um, there is also some companies that they, they think that the future of the laptop is merging it to the tablet. Yes. So they're maybe not, not, as, not as important at this list, but they also include, I don't know, like touch screen, the, the gyroscope to know which size uh, is. Yeah, that's a good and, point. And the light sensor is also. Um, the camera is going to become way more important, right? So, you know, uh, we, we want, and, and gesture support, you know, multiple, yeah. multiple, you know, so, so we have some interesting things just in usability, but, you know, and the hardware may, you know, say, well, a mouse? We still have a mouse. I think we will. You know, a gesture can be probably cut down to a mouse. Support. I think. I think for OS two usage and consumer usage, I think that the uh, the laptop will fade away. But to be honest, I don't want to even think about writing an extensive report on a tablet. I mean, I think that currently looking at the input methods that we have, mm -hmm. if you work on a large Excel Excel spreadsheet, looking at the work that I do in the office for supporting customers. I mean, you get an Excel sheet with half a million articles in your products and editing that on the tablet with the touch, I mean, currently the keyboard and the mouse. Mm -hmm. I think there's still going to be laptops around for business purposes at least. Um, it, it may well be. And, you know, I'm, I'm in town with Looker. And so obviously they're looking at the next generation of how do you work with data. And they like the camera. You know, they like you just pointing to your data. And yeah. that selects, you know, you know, in a mouse, you got, you just, it scans your hand and figures out where you're pointing. Yeah. You know, so I, I see that as probably the pointing device. And, and you know, I, I haven't tried it using an Excel spreadsheet. I've seen a movie of someone editing Express. Well, not an Excel spreadsheet, but an you know, online, you know, cloud spreadsheet with, with one of those. <laughs> With a 3D helmet on, browsing through your well, uh, accounting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they're always releasing three headsets. <laughs> VR. Uh, the Star Wars, the, <laughs> the Explorer, there is Microsoft, and the Google. Uh, well, they are releasing three well. well, if you they have, have a large here, yeah. 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 because of the uh, <laughs> film festival, Samsung's got a big uh -huh. display <laughs> booth, some thingy, whatever it is. And they've got all their yeah. virtual reality headsets that you can actually test. Yeah. And they've actually got one of them that somebody is wearing. You can sit down in a chair and they strap you in. And I mean they strap you in, your legs and everything else. Yeah. Because you will be upside down through part of this. Right. And let fly with a uh, uh, roller coaster ride. It's hard to edit a 3D spreadsheet on a laptop, but it's not so hard to do in an immersive virtual reality. Uh -huh. Yeah.
And you know, that's why this data company has a 3D studio in their back room. You know, so you can walk in and edit 3D spreadsheets there. So I don't know. That's uh, see where that goes. But we, we probably won't be doing that on OS2. So <laughs> okay. Um, I, we don't have Stephen here, so we can't really talk that much about Snap and, and what, what he's going to do with it. I, I did just sort of note that um, I had been so hung up on Snap and hardware support that eventually I, I looked at Panorama on newer hardware, and it was so much faster than the fully accelerated Snap that I was like, I probably was concerned about the wrong thing. And so, um, you know, certainly, the graphics on this are faster than anything that I had uh, accelerate support for. Um, so, no such thing is fast enough. Well, <laughs> too yeah. much trouble with instantaneous. It's not fast enough. Yeah, <laughs> compared to other platforms, compared to you know, right. 3D. Oh, yeah, but the last we're uh, 2D cards were <laughs> like snap. Yeah. Okay, and uh, not, it, it doesn't support uh, windowed uh, DOS or. Right. Or Win 3.1. Uh, but it's a PCI Express, uh -huh. you know, 16 lane yeah. card. Yeah, I had one. And it's, it's pretty fast. Yeah, but it's, okay. it's not as fast as this or the previous generation, the previous two generations that I showed you on the screen. <coughs> Both of those in Panorama are far faster than the fully accelerated snap on the fastest hardware that I can assemble. So. Oh, and you're talking about a laptop yeah. scale. On the desktop as well. Did you run a sysbench sys, sys on it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how many PM marks and dive score you got for the. Yeah. Well, dive score seems particularly unfair to the accelerated yeah. graphics. <laughs> PM marks, at least, you know, that looks a little bit closer, you know, where you say, wow, that was pretty fast. But if you have the numbers, show them. I'm interested. Okay. I, I do have them, but not not in this presentation. Um, okay. This, yeah, USB is, yeah. the reason is that I can switch off USB 3.0 on this one. Uh, I'm afraid that, well, I've, I've tested several desktops. I haven't got a newer generation than the T540, but newer generations will have USB 3.0 only. Uh, What's that mean when you switch it off and turns into USB 2.0? Yeah, if you switch off USB 3.0 in, in this particular laptop, and I think in, in several desktops that I had as well. So that, um, that allowed me to, to install. Um, otherwise, you know, it loses the track when it comes to that point and activating the device drivers, all of a sudden I've lost uh, connection to the DVD drive I was installing from or I lose the mouse and keyboard. Um, yeah, wireless, okay. Yeah, uh, PC card adapters for the T20, I really T23. Oh, sorry about that. Well, T23 and T30 use PC card adapters. T43 through T61 had supported mini PCI adapters. X200, 500 used Gen Mac unsupported mini PCI adapters, so it had built-in support that was a little flaky. And then all subsequent models are using these externals that you're seeing all over the room, uh, the travel routers. So um, the travel routers will take care of us for a while. I, you know, I, I was so concerned with my you know, Wi-Fi support, and now I see, well, this is what life is without it. Now that I've, you know, I am living without it, it's not that bad. Until they take out the Ethernet jack. <laughs> uh, right. You know, how long, how long, I, I think there are already some that don't have it. Oh yeah, Ultrabooks mostly don't have them. Okay, yeah. yeah. How do they talk to the world? I think the X1 Carbon thing kind of doesn't have it. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. what the Yoda does, doesn't have built in Ethernet. Yeah, so you know, Wi Fi is you know, kind of the future for Ethernet, you know, for, for networks. So. They, they rely on Wi Fi. Yeah. yeah. So I tested in my office the wired LAN, I get about 40 megabytes per second, megabits per second. The Wi Fi, I get about 8. Well, that using uh, our OS2 Wi-Fi drivers. No, no, this is on some Windows thing. Okay. But the point is, the, the speed difference is dramatic, not to mention the reliability. 
I, I think that you, if you got a newer Wi-Fi, that, that it would be it would not be so dramatic. Um, you know, certainly. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's still blocked. You know, we have we have gigabit wire wireless in town where I come from. I don't know. It, it should be comparable to gigabit wire. Uh, okay. I, I don't want to talk too much about the BIOS versus UEFI. I'm just not an expert on it. But uh, um, I, when I first encountered the UEFI, it was on a kind of clunky model that didn't really do it right. And so I got a bad idea of it. But you know, as long as we have BIOS emulation, I, I, don't, I don't see this as being a real issue. I, I was sort of really concerned about it at first. And you know, this was sort of the page to say, eh, I might not have been concerned about something that's that important. We will probably always have some way of, of having BIOS. Uh, I don't see us really using UEFI directly from OS2, um, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, yeah. The, the, yeah, I talked about that already. USB stick installation will be excellent. Um, yeah, I think Lewis is probably going to demo of that for later. Um, yeah, hard drive, I talked about that, and you know, we were talking about, well, you know, there'll be some other way. The RAM drive software already gives us access, if you know, that is in some machines non-volatile, or at least non-volatile between warm boots. Um, so, you know, I, I see this as being sort of a model for what, what a machine without a hard drive interface will look like. We'll just have a driver to make RAM look like a hard drive. It's, it, it doesn't even look hard. Um, so... Uh, we lag behind desktop support just because there's more stuff on a laptop. Um, yeah, things have improved on Arch OS 5. I, I, I'm curious to install on a T, T60 or X60 just to see uh, everything work right out of the box. Uh, in a, in a, you know, sort of the first real ecom station went through its entire life without actually showing this you know, gosh, everything in the computer works. Right, so that, that seems kind of exciting. So well, there's a quick end to this. Questions on laptop or comments on laptop support? Go ahead. If you have only RAM yeah. in your computer, what is your non-volatile? Well, some of it will have to be, some or all of it will have to be non-volatile. You know, have to be what? Non-volatile. But you said there's only going to be RAM. Right. But it's non-volatile RAM. You gotta non-volatile RAM. Yeah. <laughs> some or all of it will have to be non-volatile, right? So, but it, it doesn't have to work on the same interface. You know, the, uh, the, the phones and tablets have their own way of accessing it. And Intel has stated that they're going to do this, so I don't know what interface they're going to provide to the RAM. You know, and, well, if it's a 64-bit processor, it is. I mean, then it, there's no 32-bit. You just directly anymore. access it. When, why do you need to? Um, have an interface. You just have, you know. Well, some of it's got to be non-volatile, and you yes. still have to have security. So, so you just have to make sure that you've got to jump hardwired down at the bottom to get you up to where you have all the stuff, and away you go. <laughs> yeah. Why is UEFI not in the parts? Is it so totally different? It would never work, or what? Um, let's see. I don't, really know I don't know that much about it, but the. It, you have to have a, a sense of trust. You know, in other words, that it, it won't boot something it doesn't know, and it costs quite a bit of money to become a, a trusted vendor. And we're never going to have that. We're probably not going to have that available to us. Maybe, maybe, maybe somebody will donate the money to you know make us a trusted vendor. Do you have any? How much money is it to to be a? Uh, I don't. I don't really know. But, but aside from an issue like that, is there technical reasons why? It's is the 64-bit environment? I don't know. That that may not bother us. You know, we already have a 64-bit loader out there. You know, Arc OS is a 64-bit loader. That may not be that hard. I don't have one. Neil, you have more experience with the thing about the T series and the X series. Have you ever tried another series? I, I have very little experience with the other series. Um, you know, these were the old old school series, and so I pretty much stuck with them as, you know, they never discontinued them. And uh, there seemed to be a great continuity from generation to generation, so I just 
I just stuck with those. Uh, I've you know, heard of other people with pretty good success on the other series. But, you know, it, any thoughts on the uh, retro ThinkPad that I've been working on? Oh, I've got a good look at that. It's a four T470 underneath the hood, so we can't really run on it. But uh, it would be well. Okay, so no USB 2.0 whatsoever. Good. So we just need for that we do need the USB 3.0 driver, um, and that's probably the only reason. Actually, I think it has a DVD. It's supposed to be pretty. Um, Classic design, like classic style keyboard, classic screen. Classic. You can't do that. Yep, but we can do whatever. I work. think it even has a four by three screen. Isn't that right? I'm not sure. I, I, I'd settle for a sixteen by ten screen. Yeah, but four by three would be pretty interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, I mean the picture was unclear to me. As long as it doesn't have a sixteen by nine screen, I'm happy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw a discussion, but I don't remember what the conclusion was on the right. screen. But I, I, you really should have a four by three screen. You want to be classic, mm -hmm. and you know that's a custom job. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. They're yeah. 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 a big company. They could force yeah. anybody to make anything for that. Yeah. 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 But I think sixteen ten is probably more likely um, because it matches yeah. what uh, yeah. Macs yeah. use. It matches yeah. what uh, some uh, tablets yeah. use. I think so. Probably okay. the manufacturer. It wouldn't be that hard to get manufacturers. To do it for I was wondering about that because I was looking at the MacBook specs and going, why did the screen dimension come from? So this 1610. Yeah, it's the same as the W500 and the yeah. X200. Right. Yeah, they, they went through a period of 1610 before they went to 169. Yeah. And I'm okay with 1610, but I can't stand 169. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 169 is like, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel as if I'm looking through a letterbox and I'm trying to do. <laughs> I, I'll get used to it, but you might not. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's okay for a monitor because you got a nice big monitor. It doesn't matter, but on, oh. on a laptop screen, you just don't have enough vertical space. Okay, and I don't have a tiny. You know, this is this is like that. You know, but, um, this is a sixteen nine, but it isn't a tiny sixteen nine. That will probably feel pretty constricting. Interesting. Yeah. Just one question. What about the track point? Oh. Have, have you been trying the track point through the generations of ThinkPad? I have. See how, how how it's to react, because I think that right now, like we are missing some settings of the track point, like a speed or. Uh, the really speed's fast. terrible on this, and actually, I have s been setting the tracking speed quite a bit on. Uh, I'm, I've got the wrong driver on this. You know, I find I'm using A mouse, and I should be on S mouse, but. Uh, I had you know, broken my wrist, and so I can't use a traditional mouse very well anymore. You know? And so I got an you know, adaptive mouse, which now I steer from the elbow. And uh, tracking speed was really horrible, so I had to you know, really back that down. I was like, if this was a real mouse, this would be painful to use. But you know, now my mouse has to move you know, a foot and a half in every direction. You know? and so. The tracking speed, you know, turned all the way down is actually a wonderful thing. I'm glad they gave us that much range on tracking speed, um, and that, that's been working very well. I haven't really thought about adjusting this, but I, I, I will, because um, if, if I have to use this for any length of time, it, I, you know, my wrist will feel like it fell off. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So, do uh, you think it's just we don't have the settings, or there's more? I think we, we we're missing some settings on the speed and and what the what the third button used to do on the past. Oh, that's right. They used to be <coughs> that you yeah press harder on it yeah, and it's a click. Yeah, <coughs> and, and well press to select. That's or something like that. single mouse only, right? Yeah. Yeah. I okay. So I need to install the right driver before yeah. I can even really address the, the issue. And I think in the older models there was the the magnificent the magnificent. Magnifier, the magnifier. Yeah. Magnifier, yeah. On, on older mode. Was that in the mouse driver or was that in the video driver? I'm not sure. Yeah. It, was a program, but it, was a program, it was a program that was called by the, yeah. the third bottom. Yeah. So. I, I, I remember that. I remember bringing it up. Yeah. Um, but I don't remember if it was, yeah, it was part of Snap or part of. No, no, it, it, it was part of the ThinkPad drivers. It was. Okay. <coughs> Yeah, and back then. But it, it got lost on the time. It, yeah. it had OS2 support. 
because I remember using it, but I, I, mean, I obviously didn't find it useful. <laughs> But, but, yeah. no. but, but I, I found out that the magnifying glass is very useful when you do some presentations and you're demonstrating some software. Uh -huh. The magnifying glass yeah, is very yeah, useful yeah. for that well, presentation. So in the, in, the, in the projector, you can zoom the thing that you're calling or yeah. moving or something. Snap had that too. Yeah. The, the zooming was, was yes. terrific. And I haven't really started using that again. Snap was, well, you know, couldn't use it for years and you know, I've, I've just gotten to the point where I'm using it again and you know, well, okay, it has some rough edges which I haven't opened bugs for, it, but um, I, it, it, it's refreshing, you know, a lot of stuff does work and some long-standing bugs that I had in Snap, I'm not seeing, probably because I'm not using ATI chipsets anymore. So, yeah, interesting. This is the end of the presentations for today. Um, Thank you. Just before you